Oh, spilled all over my dick. <laughs> so did I. Spilled all over Brent's dick. Oh, man. I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> hey, Brent's dick gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, it's hard it's not sexy, to. Brent. <laughs> yeah. Great pour by me. Great pour. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit, dude. And nice head. Is that the cotton mm. candy flavor? Got a small oh, dude. Head of mine. Hmm. Are we? Mm. This is fucking great. I this already know great. it. Well, nice. Cheers to everybody that didn't drink yet. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. I saw someone cheers. else drink, so I did. I, I had to sip it because it was like about to spill. I wasn't going to oh, like move it back spill. onto the coaster. Right. Just cast blame, cast aspersions, you know? I don't want to make a large fault. mess for my wife to clean up. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Great she, better not be watch she better not be watching this, dude. <laughs> oh, why would she? Bitch. So uh, this is Brave New Whirlpool. This is a North American Pilsner from Humble Sea, courtesy of our courtesy of our buddy uh, Jimmy Tran. And this is in collaboration with Gold Dot. Never heard of them before. Seventh anniversary. Um, it just says an American Pilsner with heirloom corn, and you it can definitely uh, you can definitely taste like the corn malt instead mm. of uh, like a Pilsner malt or whatever, like different grain. Hmm. We need to have him back on the show this fall, winter. Really good. Have him ship us some, some beers back out and. Yeah, that was a great show. Yeah, he's yeah good he's dude. awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, can I talk about mine real quick? Hey, this Go ahead. right here, even more Hydra. This thing is from October twenty twenty two, and it's fucking money. I mean, it's absolutely great. It's got, uh, it's a sour ale um, from Even Evil Twin Brewing and Mortalis. Blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, cacao nibs, and marshmallows. Mm -hmm. And nothing has fallen off of this thing. I've been saving yeah, almost this one. two years old now. Yeah, and it's, I mean, you get that with with uh, smoothies and you get that with uh, stouts where they where they hang on for a long time but i've been testing the waters with this one and uh man it's great yeah i've actually never had a smoothie go bad even though i've seen other people say theirs went bad like they kind of have a rotten flavor because the fruit but mm -hmm. never happened to me but, man it's super good usually like fresh beers don't you like brewed as recently as possible for ipos yeah, yeah. Just because IPAs. the hop flavor falls off really quickly. Um, but like Pilsner's lagers, they last a long time. Stouts last forever. Um, it's just it's just hazy IPAs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is like half your diet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Steelhead. Much. Steelhead root beer. Oh, that's and crafted as opposed to foot crafted. Right <laughs> and it's got a it's made with pure vanilla and natural honey Ooh, not natural unnatural honey. it's like not unnatural not, honey not yeah. unnatural not foot honey. crafted not foot crafted honey you don't do that <laughs> that shit here but it's got a it's good it's, it's way sweeter than i than i was expecting you got I a lot of root beers huh root beers are fine I did, you know, there's actually you like, got a lot of different kinds. No, no. but they, they, there are like, there's like, like the craft brewing scene is like also present in root beers. It's a root um, beer scene. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, but no, it's a. I didn't really look at the flavors before I bought it, and when I tasted it, I was like, damn, this is sweet. So it makes sense that it has the natural honey. Um, but I was expecting it to be drier. How, how do you I like haven't it? drank soda in like seven years, probably. Mm. How do you like it, TJ? For you, man. What's up? How do you like it? Good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Um. Like I said, uh, I I probably, if it was a, a choice between this one and something else, I'd probably go for another one just because I like a drier root beer and not something as a uh, sweet and coaty. Like, mm -hmm. like kind of like, 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 like barks. Mouth. Barks has bite. It's not like barks does have bite. It's got that burn. Got the burn, but I like the vanilla. I like I like vanilla -y instead of spicy, yeah. just not yeah. so sweet. That's good. 
Belina, what's up? This party Come really on, baby. My next Bellini. Uh, Petty Alice, which is a Portland brewery who uh, I just recently discovered, and I've had three beers of theirs, and they've all been flipping amazing. So good. This one is an XPA, which I think means just like experimental <laughs> pale ale. Right. It's a good one. And it's got some strata, mosaic, and galaxy. Extreme hops. pale ale. It's only 5.0, but it tastes like a lot bigger. Like not, it's yeah, it has really a lot of well flavor, done. not watery. No. <laughs> they That's do a awesome. good job, dude. They do they a really do a good job. Great job. In fact, yeah. the hazy I had of theirs is the best store shelf hazy I've had <clears throat> in Portland easily. Yeah, they do a good job. Yeah. So it's really impressive when people do like a high ABV IPA that doesn't taste boozy and it tastes really flavorful and stuff. But I also think yeah. it's also like even more impressive in a way when they can do a super low ABV IPA and have it feel like jam packed with flavor, have a nice thick creamy body. Fidens does that. And uh, yeah, I always really like that. You like a nice cr- solid. thick creamy body? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but without having to have a super high ABV. Yes. Yeah. I think it's like yeah, 5.0. Nice. Yeah, it's good stuff. Because that's kind of the drawback with lower ABV IPAs are usually just not as flavorful because they don't need to pack as much into it to hide the low alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, What's that, Alex? This is, this is um, Utah Margarita. Ooh. It was from oh, the grocery baby. store, and it's the one thing that was floating around in my camper fridge. Yes. I had the to-go nice. beer on the last episode, which was recorded on a different day, of course. And then uh, <laughs> 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 the to-go beer from a block away, and now I have what's left from my fridge, and it's uh, it's basically a sour. It's like a lime sour, lime and agave sour. It's not really like a margarita at all. I'd have to like put it on ice, put salt around the rim, and like add alcohol to make it be like a margarita but yeah why is your driver sleeping all right so this, me and tj do this when we're in death valley he'll like pretend to be asleep at the wheel you can see his hand on the wheel and like he's actually watching <laughs> but then we'll drive by people and just watch their reactions like on the highway <laughs> 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 like... my neck looks so big in there yeah, like dude neck. Neck. dude <laughs> you've been working out bro <laughs> Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're slow. Yeah, you know, <laughs> keep one eye open. So hey, dude, when you're in the when you're in the slow lane, you just like you do that. See, you keep your right eye open. And you're just like it's pretty convincing. He looks he looks like he's asleep, <laughs> and then people are just like what? <laughs> as they drive by. It's hard for me to like not laugh as I'm doing it, <laughs> dude. That neck flex is freaking awesome. Yeah, oh, and I'm... you're wearing your you're wearing your buff too, so it makes it look even shorter and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like a little, a little yeah, stock, like a. Yeah, it's like a um yeah. yeah. Oh TJ has a nice photo of me for his background. Circa twenty eighteen. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't aged a bit. That's a <laughs> that's a classic right there. That is a classic. A classic Noriega. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Is that Bennett? <laughs> oh, shit. Smaller, <laughs> though. I can't. It won't, it won't make it smaller. Dude, how baked is Bennett right there? Well, you're like right between the eyes, though, which is nice. No, so that was a selfie I took in my tent, like uh, like after four weeks of being in the backcountry in Patagonia. No oh, shit. Just getting hammered by weather. <laughs> what's the what's the belt what's the belt around your neck about <laughs> i was trying to kill That's myself like, great photo. it's so good dude <laughs> sorry. it doesn't look as bad on on the phone because it's like all bright kind of like sorry nice. not am single yeah <laughs> that <was the> caption. <laughs> That's so good dude yeah i sent that to tj as soon as i got wi-fi was this when nice. you had to like stay in your tent for days on end and rats were biting you and shit? Yeah, I think it was my first trip or the second one. They were all pretty gnarly, but yeah. What was the story? Like weather? Yeah. The Patagonia is just yeah. notorious. Like every time I've gone, there have been stents of at least like three to, I mean, my first trip, there was a stent of seven days where I was literally just sitting in my tent every single goddamn day because oh, it was just 
sideways wind and snow i would only go out to take a shit once a day like it's literally <laughs> not worth going outside winter uh, obviously yeah uh, fall yeah. but sideways yeah. rain actually even worse than snow when it would snow i'd actually come out because you wouldn't get like as soaked but yeah sideways wow. rain damn dude huge puddle in my tent like everything around my sleeping pad is just like a lake floating and stuff's just floating around sounds miserable Quit questioning who you are as a person and a human i didn't bring like any reading material podcast or anything so i was just like over and over again reading like the ingredients on my meals like reading <laughs> tags on clothing like you know like the that's so fucked up dude tent. like i just read all oh. that stuff like the warning labels like literally over and over again that was like my <laughs> material dude, the time. that is so <laughs> fucked up we were little sitting on the toilet it's like solitary oh. confinement Damn, oh, dude. Shampoo bottles in the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> like the only thing you have to read when you're in there? Uh, so bad. Yeah, dude. That's that's exactly it. You're just looking at those, you just look at those ingredients over and over. <laughs> yeah, I know, duck, like, what's in every runners. single meal that I eat. Wow. Brent, what are you slinging? Uh, I got an Untitled Art Italian-style pills. It's a really, it's like one of the higher quality breweries in my area i know that you guys like to check the dates on cans so this one's date is uh july 1st best buy so it's only like a few weeks expired so what's uh oh yeah best buy date so that's, they probably put that like <laughs> it's an six old one out yeah, yeah. No, a friend gave me this dude they should that, uh, not that's such a shitty deal yeah it's not alcoholic it's a okay. great beer though they make most of their um, their beers non-alcoholic, so that's it's like the best <laughs> NA I've ever found. Nice, it is. You guys share that with uh, Mikey. I did. I don't know if you okay, ever got good. any. Good. Yeah, he's out slogging through the minefields of just garbage NA beer. <laughs> Dude, he, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, there's good stuff out Better there, but it's a, it's a minority. Yeah, he's he's putting in that freak. He's doing he's doing the Lord's work. Yeah, telling us what not to do. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Thanks for having me back again, though. Always a pleasure. No, it's cool having you back on, dude. That's awesome. It's funny we we're just like literally talking about this a week ago. Because you had your anniversary. You Very wanted cool. him to come right. on the show, Paul. Yeah, I was like, dude, where are you at, man? Let's go. There you go, TJ. That's not embarrassing at all. No. Not yeah. It's it's not not embarrassing the photos, embarrassing of you. photos only. Yes. Is it the hat? The most embarrassing one I have. Yeah, it's not a cool hat. You're unembarrassable. <laughs> they managed to do that on my episode. Don't worry. So. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. So typically, we always feature. Um, you know, more landscape shit, style dude, you images. Switch shirts? Damn. What? Oh, you, you noticed? Switch shirts again? Holy shit. What? Different. Yeah, the, was that the, the third? That was pretty epic, too. The third. Let's see that shit, dude. Whoa. <laughs> Damn, that dude. Yeah. Nice. That's sick. Yeah, I had to bust it out because uh, we decided to feature all wildlife images for this one. Still nature photography, but. Um, mm -hmm bit different from the usual so pretty cool got some nice stuff lined up all right you any of you guys yeah. shoot wildlife really at all i'm notorious no, I mean, bad. alex doesn't have any i don't think no, i have i have wildlife shots but it's like like i tried shooting this deer in zion once and it like turned around and started shitting and then i was like <laughs> I, was I, have this, I have this blurry picture of a deer's ass shitting like it might be a market for that no you gotta show you gotta show the one from tetons no actually yeah okay. oh i remember that nice. photo yeah i can i can find that and put it as my background that's the one i should have picked for this episode i put my signature I, on. <laughs> I mean using the uh computers in the high school library i found out people are into poop stuff <laughs> right <laughs> back in the day that um, was you found your crew a big corner of the internet it was like oh you can look at that on the internet gross let's go look at it <laughs> <laughs> i'll shoot like a bird or something if i'm if i have my telephoto on it 
<laughs> it's near me, but you know, nothing serious. I think me and Bellino probably have the most. Bellino probably has more than I do. I mean, only just from Bellino shot Africa. like bears in Olympic and stuff, right? Dude, Bel Bellino went on a shot... fucking safari. <laughs> yeah. No shit. He's wearing, he was wearing the, the photographer vest and everything. Oh, totally. Fuck yeah. Kind of hat. He had two cameras <laughs> hanging. Oh, man. The like yeah. a motherfucker. Camouflage lenses. <laughs> Got like oh, two yeah. Barrel, two yeah, he had a lines. big net with like leaves on it and shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's freaking <laughs> yeah, crawling yeah, through the yeah. thing. Just... He was in an animatronic rhino cruising around and crawling <laughs> <laughs> back. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I came yeah. out the back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just that and puffins. That's basically the oh, yeah. only uh, wildlife puffins. I've ever Anyone see Ron's new? Iceland? I did, yeah. A we'll lot of puffin stuff. Here's one puffin shot that's just absurd, I think. Like with the Holy wings God. out. Mm. It's really good. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. I was looking at it today. I have like starfish mostly, and then I have like a couple mountain goat images. Wildlife that doesn't move. Yeah. <laughs> some barnacles. <laughs> some uh, wildlife hold right there. wildlife challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Don't move. Hold hold it right the there. Enemies. All right, hold that there, starfish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Twenty minutes later. I'm trying to find Yeah. But even though um, I don't shoot this stuff, um, I really appreciate it. A lot of these are pretty insane. This one's yeah. wild. Dude, that's dope. All right. This is mine. So Fuck. artistic. Dude, that is so dope. That's so, like, dope. so when uh, Eric reached out to me to be on this episode, I had to choose two images. And I knew the first one right away, which we'll get to later on. But the second one, I like Marco's wildlife work a lot. Um, I love it because he puts the animal within its natural environment. Um, it's not your classic African safari uh, wildlife images for the most part. And this one has kind of grabbed me right away. In fact, when I looked through his gallery, this is the I saw this one and immediately said, I want to kind of feature this one. It just is very different. It's obviously raining. It's pouring. Uh, mm. This is not the typical conditions where photographers want to shoot a giraffe in its natural environment. And... I just thought it worked out perfectly. Just the lines, his how it mimics his neck, um, just the the granular nature of the image itself, which is really good in the rain. Uh, just the cool tones, it just works as an image. But it also just shows a, a giraffe and one of these massive downpours just doing its thing and just going about its business. Yeah, it's so surreal. Man, this is good. This is so great. His his whole feed is awesome, dude. Yeah, like yeah, it looks not, like, like is it snow or is it just noise or like he said it's rain i think okay. it's rain but it's if probably very high to, iso as well he said. sorry yeah hmm. but he's got some good stuff because a giraffe almost looks like it has snow on its ears but it could just be like white fur mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah i don't think it snows wherever this is where giraffes are i doubt it kind of really i like cool, the though. tree kind of like mimicking a giraffe in the background that's sweet yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. he mentioned that too. If you're listening. Okay, jeez. Well, I'll just shut the hell up. <laughs> I kind of blew through it. <laughs> the, well, the tree, the tree grew like that for this photo. <laughs> the giraffe grew up next to the tree and copied it. Got to plan all your shots twenty years in advance. <laughs> yeah, this one is really incredible. Though when uh, I'd never seen it before, and when you mm -hmm. sent this in, Bellino, I was like, oh my god. Similar to like landscape photos, if you have subjects in less than perfect conditions, to me, it gives a sense of like a, a deeper connection with your subject. They're not just mm -hmm. going for the the golden light, perfect everything. Yeah, I've, I've never seen a giraffe in the rain photo before. I think it's, it's unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Really nice. I like how it's like tied in with the landscape too. Oh, and how the tree like mimics like the giraffe's neck. Wait. <laughs> is that brilliant. snow or is that noise? <laughs> there. Wait, so is, is it snow or rain or um uh, could be AI. <laughs> AI. No, Alex, like, AI. Alex like Alex like duly noted. <laughs> yeah, no, you got me. I uh <laughs> like getting on with you guys is like the first uh I haven't been like online at all for days and just like inundated and I was trying to respond to one important thing, but no, I won't. I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's blood in the water. On if I there's, do anything. There's, dude, there's <laughs> blood in the water. Up. Blood this in the water. Is, this shot's insane. <laughs> what? I love shots like this. Holy wow. shit. Oh, this is great. Holy shit. So I, I picked this one. I uh, 
Dude, this is it. so as as crazy. It's it. absurd. That's yeah. like one of the best wildlife shots I've ever seen. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I just love how the Holy shadows shit. are the subject here and the actual animals are like very insignificant. Like, But they <laughs> yeah, they, they mix in with the, the ground itself. Like they could yeah. be the same color as the dirt. Of the lands. Like it, it take, you have to look at it closely to understand. Holy shit. Yeah. The shot is good. It's so good. Wow. It's really good. All shadows the different are postures. Also- like every single one it's fucking wild Sully. Dude, and, way to go Sully. and there's a lot of the, the there's a lot of those in there every with... shadow is like doing something cool too yeah they're all you know all... none of them are like what if one was just like stepping like all stupid you know like <laughs> they're, yeah, they're all like yeah. they're definitely elegant looking. they're definitely running yeah yeah well so to have captured it i mean i'm sure there were a lot of frames but even I, presumably it's a drone so you, to follow a herd that's moving that's tough tougher mm-hmm. than most drone shots would be to execute i mean that's mm-hmm. that's wild yeah that's so cool do we have any more context on it uh no there wasn't much shared about it was whose pick was this yours eric yeah and just wow. the colors obviously the grounds yeah like the ground colors the, the play on color is really great like you can see the footprints from previous passings of different animals but at the same time it's kind of like almost like this canvas mm-hmm. which i love images like that yeah it's really sick <laughs> it's mind blowing. Yeah, it's absurd. I don't know. <laughs> Way to go. Good stuff. <laughs> Good pick. Good job, Eric. Thanks. Yes. Fucking great. Ooh. Yeah. Hard to have right. a wildlife episode and not feature Paul Nicklin. Yeah. Uh, I felt a little bit on Who the nose, he? but <laughs> he's a nature photographer. He was born mm. to ice. So I, I was just <laughs> going through um, his book, Born to Ice, which I think Eric. You featured it maybe on a past episode. Um, I wanted to show a different photo, but I couldn't find it online. So I'll just show you right now. It's like the most epic photo of a walrus I've ever seen. Yeah, we can barely see what it is. Oh, yeah, you sent me that to... Is it breaching? I think it's underwater, but Uh, I don't really know. so many photos. Like, it's insane that you can't find them all online, like, especially the most epic ones. Yeah, so... I I, I believe you didn't pick that one. Oh, I guess it's, find it. yeah. yeah. Um, so I picked this one, which is also in the book. Um, I just find it amazing. I love that how balanced it is, and just it's a really cool moment. I'm really confused by the perspective, like the top of the water. Uh, looks kind of weird to me, and I can't quite figure. I think it it's out. just closer to the camera because it's like undulating. So like yeah. it's like dipping down, and it's closer to the camera. Huh. But yeah, oh, I love wow. how it has like that texture of like the the white like speckles from the sunlight and then the the bottom has that layer of texture created by the fish and then like the middle is smoother and then you have the three orcas right there like really well uh pronounced super cool yeah i definitely it's like a trip I, ditch. I, wanna, I things like this make me want to play with underwater photography which yeah. is something yeah. i needed but, like i remember like <clears throat> the first time i noticed like i think it was one of uh theo's photos where like on your, he's the shot is underwater, but the surface of the water is reflective, mm-hmm. even though it's yeah. like the under yeah. the underwater yeah. surface of the water. It's just, that just like blows my mind. Mm-hmm. I'm not smart enough scientifically to understand, <laughs> it, but it's neat. Hmm. So he just wrote a an article for on landscape about underwater photography, where he like he's tried many Theo did, he's hmm. tried many different uh, cameras and housings and stuff, and kind of the. The conclusion he came to seemed to be the best thing is the like four thousand dollar housing for, for your uh, yeah, of course camera. I'm like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. all right, or just an iPhone. Yeah, yeah iPhone. <laughs> I can get a, what is this like forty <laughs> some megapixels? Yeah, you can do like a GoPro or there's like like way smaller megapixel cameras or things like that. But you know, if you I want really want to like, like, I really want to play with uh, like dynamic water stuff like so like where a waterfall is coming into a splash pool with light as well um and it just makes me think of there was one time i was me shane bloom and andrew studer hiked to uh, wakalawa falls in the gorge and studer had a housing and his camera and a wetsuit and like flippers and shit and i'm like i don't want to get into all that but it (laughs) almost seems like it almost seems like you would need that was that when we did that trip was i on that one I don't think I don't remember you being there. The, all of us did that too, like in the gorge, but not. No, I don't think you were there because it was. I have photos from it, and you're not in any of them. But hmm. I also might not have just taken any photos. You might have excluded like 
disgusting elements from the photos. Yeah, yeah I was sharing them. Well, I was sharing them on Instagram, and I didn't want people to know I was in your company. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, I've only used in underwater underwater housing once, and it was like on this trip where I was contracted to shoot photos for a snorkeling company, and uh, that's when I shot that one like starfish photo I have that's underwater, yeah. and it was such a hassle to like maneuver that equipment and stuff like just changing settings and things and like you can only have like one lens in there because you have to like get different adapters to fit different lenses and stuff like mm -hmm. it's really uh it's not very straightforward and it's super difficult to use and make anything great it's not Could even you... cheap to rent those housings either those housings mm -hmm. are expensive to rent yeah Fuck. that's yeah, what that was a big ask. barrier for entry you just rented it eric you didn't uh no, they oh, bought wow. it. They they provided it with the camera and everything and the lens and stuff. Yeah, so I just got to use it. You just took, you know, one photo and you're done. That's all you needed. That's all I needed, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my best-selling image, too, which is kind of funny. So when I was looking for images for this show, um, I didn't look at Paul's stuff, but I was looking at Art's stuff, and I'm just like, what? like these, holy shit, like, what a career. Like, Paul and Art and yeah. like, those guys the experiences. have had, like, like when you go, if you go to a nature photographer's website and they have a part on their website, um, a menu item titled philanthropy, like, you know, they made it. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty good career. If you can be a philanthropist um, and a photographer. Anyway, uh, it's just, you yeah. know, it just like reminds me of like their level of like success and uh, their storied careers and just amazing. And it's such a different game from, the landscape stuff we do they're you know, oh, yeah. just yeah shooting a few <laughs> twigs and and a gutter and some mud twigs. <laughs> there's twigs everywhere but there's only one <laughs> snow leopard you know in some crazy region that you have to wait for for weeks or ever well, right like that one that one lady i was gonna yeah, pick or... one of those <laughs> yeah oh, that's right i joked that i was gonna pick one of those to feature in this episode <laughs> <laughs> but i only would have done it if matt Payne was here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to me it's crazy like uh with wildlife yeah. images when like they get this miraculous moment also like in really nice complimentary lighting like that just seems like you know it didn't just happen in the middle of the day like with shitty like harsh light or something you know like when everything comes together it just seems like so much um more intricate and difficult than just landscape yeah, yeah. i think it is a lot more factors oh, that's cool. this one's really crazy damn wow Speaking of a good moment. Oh yeah, this is a. This is one of the one I selected. It's uh, Ammon's work is really pretty phenomenal. Um, this specific one um, was when uh, these ibex are in in a rut, and I believe this one's taken in Israel. And uh, these are these animals are in different pockets, you know, kind of around the world, but. Uh, there's less than 3,000 of these um, Nubian ibex remaining in the wild, which which is pretty cool. Um, in his in his uh, post on this one, I guess it's three hours from where he lives, and uh, he just hung out there with a wide angle lens, and uh, I apparently goes to this spot with some frequency, and uh, just to watch them battle it out. With that scenery behind there and the lighting, uh, and pretty it's awesome. like a, looks like a pretty, pretty, pretty dangerous place to, to battle. Yeah, he said um, the fact that it's it was rut season that they did not even pay attention to him. He was mm -hmm. just back there with a wide angle, doing his thing, and they didn't give it. They didn't care that he was even there, and they were just doing their thing. Mm -hmm. First guy I love, like, the, the motion here, the frozen action. And then like, again, like what I was just saying, like the way that he got the perfect perspectives so that the horn comes up above the horizon. Like if he was a little yeah. higher, it wouldn't, you know, that that main guy there wouldn't be as accentuated, you know, like it would kind of blend in with the background too much, mm -hmm. but it stands out perfectly with that white sky behind it. What I like is, you know, normally with photographs or, you know, things you're like, you're, the story is like, or what the photo of is what the photo is the story that it's telling but like in this one it's like it's almost like foreshadowing like it's telling you not to like pay attention to what's going on now but what what happened right after this photo oh yeah to smack like, each other in the to head, me it right? looks like that news just about like you know what like bam you're and like 
throws them off the cliff, but it's like, it kind of like, it's like complete the story on your own, not I'm telling you this story. It's like, here, I'm telling you this. Now you finish the rest of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trusting Which is in your view. Open ended. That's it. Pick, piggybacking on that, TJ, the, as, the aspect ratio, it looks like a 16 by 9, maybe. Just he yeah. left the whole left side of the frame open to kind of like help you mm -hmm. go to that next step in the story, as you mentioned. Yeah. So some people may yeah, want to come in and go one by one or something, but like leaving that left side open is perfect. Yeah. It gives that feeling of like off. isolation, too. And like, you know, it's just they're in this desolate area yeah. of Badlands, adds to that feeling. And being on That's the side cool. of the cliff. Yeah. And that dust that's kicked up and like, Lit up yeah this all night is cool yeah that's 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 one of the first things i noticed i'm like i worked my way like from the top down and saw the separation in the uh in the plane there with the horn and then all the way down it's 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 pretty amazing shot Great beard stuff. is perfectly illuminated mm -hmm. back lip beard <laughs> that's pretty yes go i didn't catch that that's nice oh of course yep sebastian the man, mother of God. So I picked this one, but first I wanted to show a different one, if that's okay. Um, and this is the uh, Pacific Northwest uh, tongue-lipped Noriega. <laughs> so wild, <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, it's uh, it's endangered. <laughs> um, Definitely <laughs> endangered. Yeah, you yeah. don't see that very often anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I mean, Sebastio, like he's. What I what I love about all of his work is it looks it's so well seen, even like the more photojournalistic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just like it's not just what you're documentary. Being given. It's like it's there's so much more to the photo. Yeah, like artistic. That uh, make, yeah, yeah, that makes it like, you know, and it seems like it's like the only only shit that he can do. Like it, yeah. it almost feels like everything is staged because it's so good. And that's kind of um what hit me about this photo is just like it, yeah it's not just a bunch of penguins but like the the caldera or whatever it is the mountain kind of coming down in the back is just was it is it mc escher that like did those paintings where there's like you know like uh it'll be like birds in like black and white and then they'll slowly transition into something entirely different yeah, on like, the other side yeah like, like a hand, patterns. yeah, like, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. this reminds me of like penguins yeah. just slowly turn into these like ridges in the hills yeah. in the background mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and just because of the perspective of the the lens too, there's like this mimicry of everything kind of like coming into the middle. Um, but yeah, just the, the the depth of you know the the penguins kind of just going off. And there's so many of them. Look how look how many there are. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've seen like ten Endless. penguins in my life. I couldn't imagine like being somewhere like this, and it's just yeah. Anyway, yeah. must be um, super loud too. It's smelly. Yeah. It's like smelly. you're in a stadium or something. But yeah, no, I just, I, 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 I really value, um, I'm not a big wildlife photography uh, consumer, but the ones that I do are ones that, where it's not like the wildlife is, which is funny because like the other image I picked is completely in the opposite direction of what I'm saying right now, but um, where it, it, they're more of a component of the whole entire image instead of just the focus. Yeah. So anyway. Brent doesn't consume any wildlife. No. <laughs> He's no. a non-consumer. So do vegan. Vegan. Wait, you're vegan or just vegetarian? Just vegetarian. Yeah. Come I on, live guys. in Wisconsin, man. I, I can't go without cheese. Can't go without cheese. Can't do it. A fucking impossible. cheese is awesome, dude. <laughs> yep. There's a craft cheese scene here. I bet there is. So you can blow out the gnarliest fart. <laughs> <laughs> Part of it. <laughs> I'm trying in my head right now. I'm trying to come up with a show based around JPEGs or photos and something with dairy. So it's either like diarrhea or gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, trying to, I'll, I'll come up with something. Lactose yes. and uh, something. Yes. Um, oh, great pick though. Sebastian is incredible. That's, that mimicry yeah. from top to bottom in shape mm -hmm. and tone is like what does it for me. I like that. The whites and midtones and shadows matched in the top and the bottom. It's just good point. Yeah, it, it yeah, makes the whole absolutely. thing complete. Like, and and what's like part of me whenever I see this stuff, it just I'm like, if I was there or if anybody else was there, like how would they photograph it? 
and like comparing the two, right? Like, so like what would somebody else get out of the scene versus him getting out of the scene? And obviously the way that he processes and this, the tones that he selects to mm -hmm. bring out and his, his contrast and everything have a big part in, you know, the final presentation, but it's just like, man, I, I would love to see him work. Like, cause like the whole, the whole workers series, like that's like yeah, one of my favorite graphic series ever. Yeah. And it looks like it's, it looks like it's staged and this dude's just like walking around as people are doing their jobs. And I'm like, the moments are so that? authentic, you know, they can't be yeah. staged, but it's so perfectly right. conveyed. Yep. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, he's those are really evocative. Yeah. His book Genesis, which I believe this image is in, it's like a two page spread is insane. Hmm. Brent, you Must still have. have that? It's right back there. It's that red book. I had to sell Brent my copy when I lived in a trailer before this camper. It was just That's it was right. so huge. It's the biggest okay. photography book that I had. It's like this thing is that was, uh, a liability. It's so fucking good, though. Yeah, it's all the sticky, day too. <laughs> Alex and I first met, we looked at that book together at my house. That's true. Yeah. yeah Not like just like morning. this book, like yeah. literally this copy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I, sold Brent. I sold Brent that one, yeah. It's got stuck together pages. I guess I have yeah. I have yeah, treasures. Block. One block. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paperweight. Yes. Yeah, yeah that was, was a like... that was a PJ'd, a PJ'd copy. Pre <laughs> yeah. You guys are fucking animals. The NJ, the NJG. Ooh. Oh shit. Marcel. There's another yeah, carpet. Marcel, guy. dude. So I got that one right here too. Same photo. Oh nice. Oh wow. <laughs> Dude, I heard, I heard that you guys had already picked like Sebastian and Art and all these people. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? And Eric reminded me of Marcel and this like instantly remembered this photo. Like, of course, it's one of the great wildlife. Photos. Unbelievable. Um, Hell yeah. yeah, I just I, you'll find in, in both my picks that like it's putting the wildlife in context the same way that Sebastian was, I guess. And like, that's my favorite kind is, mm -hmm. you know, not just filling the frame with a bird or something, you know, like, yeah. It's, really and it's and it's an uh, incredible habitat. photograph with a moment involving the wildlife that you can't possibly predict or, or create yourself you know you just have to be able to react to it like that's and this would be a good photo if the if the, the wildlife wasn't even there you know it's like still sure, a would, yeah. compelling yeah. photo yeah sort of like like you'd want a milky way photo to be a good photo without the milky way there so what's crazy here too is just make it the elephant the is the subject and he's so tiny compared to everything else but he just draws your attention like so powerfully the contrast is he's like the darkest thing in the frame maybe the bottom of the cliffs but yeah it really stands out so striking yes it totally is dude marcel is so good, good. Is... that book mother is like how is that brent it's incredible um I talking about it it seemed kind of expensive so i didn't pull the trigger i know you you I paged it through it uh when we met oh, i tried your copy yeah in like yeah. a wisconsin mm -hmm. breakfast diner party. yeah yeah that was it is that where but, we did our trade like where i sold you the sebastian book i think it was at the uh, out, pancake of the, house. out of the trunk of a prius yeah yeah um, <laughs> you met at a gas station yeah the just book? like a wildlife <laughs> photography book <game. laughs> the book is incredible though i would say like I, i'm i'm not a wildlife photography buff either but his strength seems to be putting animals in context and he has a really like graphic eye i think he's even like trained in like graphic arts so there's tons of photos where like just the way that like the landscape and the, uh gives context to the animals is just like it's all like perfectly like laid out it feels designed the way that he does mm -hmm. it so if you yeah if you like this style of photo animals in context uh couldn't recommend that that book enough right he has this polar bear shot of a polar bear on his i believe it's like an iceberg and it's just incredible. Like, a lot of these uh, like so iconic beautiful. wildlife photos too, like you can just tell they represent like years and years and years and years of hard work. Like, I wonder how stoked he was when he shot this. Like, if this was something that he had kind of preconceived or like ever envisioned before. Hmm. But like, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's the cover of his book, so I'm pretty sure this was like a big kind of milestone image for him. Mm -hmm. I remember. I mean, I think this is why I know him. Then he had like a. I think the original Nikon Z7, like their first mirrorless, he did their like ad campaign and that got him a lot of eyes on him. But I remember this being the first time I saw him. Yeah, it's wild. It's it's almost like too crazy to comprehend, you know, like it doesn't feel real in a way. There's something that none of us will ever see in our lives, you know, it's like kind of unrelatable. Could be AI. One of the powers of photography, right? To convey that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Share it with people that would never get to experience it otherwise. You don't have to leave my house. <laughs>
Ron. I'm glad we got something from Ron. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I was looking through his new ebook from my son today, and uh, while I was putting the showcase together, so I was like, oh, he's got some wildlife stuff in there. I should throw something in. And uh, this one's really cool, just a super cool moment. The mother feeding the chick, I guess. I don't know, they look like the same size, so I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, yeah, they're like on top of ice or something, which is really cool. And the blue background and the bokeh effect and stuff. I don't know. I thought this was really nice. It looks like uh, somebody shot it that actually like specializes in wildlife, you know, not someone just wearing flip flops and cargo shorts. And just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you saying? With socks and. <laughs> It's the awesome yes. thing about Ron. He doesn't. He's not. He doesn't need to play it up. He's looking for. He just. He doesn't. Yeah. Just Ron. He doesn't care what anyone thinks, and he doesn't do it for a living, even though he totally could. So he probably he probably makes more money not doing it for a living than I do doing it for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Book sales. Yeah, the yeah, no. layering here is super nice. Love the blue colors. The color palette yeah. overall is really sick. And just the way the wings are spread out like that. Yeah, that flying bird, the the back wing, especially catching that light, that's pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's like the separation sick. between the wings because of that. Yep, yep. He's got is a little uh, like ankle a... bracelet. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, is this uh, on house arrest or something? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Doing time. So these are like girls, pretty hard right? time. Are these birds the, the world record holders for longest migration per year? So they go. What birds like, are these? Yeah, these are the Arctic terns, I believe. Hmm. Are they in Iceland? Yeah. They're all, they're all over Iceland. But I believe they go down to Antarctica for the summer down there, and they come all the way back up north um, as the seasons turn. So That's I insane. They, these tiny birds can fly across the planet. So long. Dumbasses. They can, they can make that so much easier for themselves. <laughs> I know. They know that they, can like not, they don't have to go all the way to Antarctica. Dumbasses. Yeah. <laughs> I think they figured that out by now. TJ, you got a you got a photo of us that's not terrible. What's up with that? I don't know which way I'm supposed to go. <laughs> we were holding photos of ourselves on laptops and laughing. Is this for yeah. Ted? Like Ted wasn't around and we were making him feel bad. Yeah, we used to do this thing where we would laugh, like post photos of like us having a really good time in the absence of Ted, and then tag him <laughs> in the photo. <laughs> so this was uh, as a way to make him come join us not to yeah, so this was uh me and alex having a really good time holding photos of us having a really good time all right and... it's very meta <laughs> and now it's a photo of you in front of that but yeah this whole uh ebook that ron put out is really nice lots of great stuff in it so highly recommend people check that out yes. as well and it's yeah. free like all of his For sure. download and in the vein of wildlife he has out. so many good puffin photos in there in particular mm-hmm there's like a whole section on them. Yeah, I like this one because of the the composition, like of the layers yeah. and the color palette. <laughs> the composition and something you can't plan, but it works. Like yeah. composed in that moment. Yeah, it's such a perfect moment. Mike, did you guys uh, shooting in the puffin or these guys when you're there? We uh, puffins, yes, not these turns. Um, I spent the whole night shooting puffins, but really fun to shoot. But like again, I'm not much of a bird or wildlife photographer, so. I got some decent ones, but nothing crazy like this. Although these are not puffins, but um, it's fun. Like cool. an insane, like a colony I'd never heard of before in a different part of the island where there's just literally hundreds, if not thousands of them, just, just all over the place. It's incredible. And a really wow. picturesque setting. Yeah, it's good. That is one of the most. Oh, like... this one. What the? Dude, this, this is so is crazy. Brutal. Holy shit. All right. <laughs> so this is mine. And uh, what Eric and Blame in the show, he we both mentioned this one is a, a contender. So when I first saw this image, I thought it was just brutally tragic, you know, obvi for obvious reasons. Where this young, I believe it's a baboon, um, holding onto his mother who was just killed by a leopard. And uh, what an incredible just image, first of all. And the different layers of storytelling and the different ways you can kind of like help your mind just think about it in different ways. Whereas, you know, obviously it's very tragic for the, the mother. And of course, the fate it's a of two the for baby. one for the for the left. Oh. <laughs> <Little dessert. laughs> I mean, it's it's so it's I feel so heart wrenching for the little 
baby baboon. Yeah. But at the same time, this is a leopard who, so it seems tragic and maybe. Well, the, le the leopard's carrying evil. it somewhere. I think it's taking it back to feed its children, exactly. you know? Exactly. And so it's a whole idea it's of like, not yes, just eating it on tragic, the spot. But maybe this leopard hasn't eaten for a couple of days. Maybe there's a cub who also needs sustenance who's maybe uh, yeah. starving. So it's just that web of life, the food chain. Um, but it speaks a lot more about how we as humans apply emotions to situations like this, where this is just what happens in nature. It right. It's not both... good or bad. It's yeah, just it's not nature. It's just, it, it's it's the, the, the leopard is behaving exactly as it is meant yep. to. And yeah. so are the monkeys that are being eaten. And something can be both, you know, evil and good at the same time. Just depends on your context and your and your perspective. Um, yeah. It's... And so I feel like this image really helps just, you know, it, it's something to contemplate. Like you can really sit here and just contemplate this image and what it means. And it also, I feel like in many ways, can help us understand our own, you know, the way we perceive the world as humans. Um, mm -hmm. We want to say this is tragic, but really it's not. This is just the way things are. And it's not yeah. good, it's not bad. Those are human attributes. We're attributing these things to the situation, but this is not the situation. It's neither good or bad. It's something it's I really love about. really sad onto, that, onto the baby's face. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah it's just summer. still holding on to its mom and you know, like it's not going to have a good fate. But uh, what I love about images like these, like these really raw, brutal, like kill photos of carnivores is... Uh, it just reveals like how much we romanticize nature. And oftentimes I, I contemplate that, like, are we really doing anything good by romanticizing nature so much where, you know, we're only conveying like the idyllic moments and like, you know, these places that look like paradise and just acting like nature is all about, you know, good vibes and having like the best day of your life and all that. Cause really there's this whole other side of it that is just as important and just as real that's like unfolding and we're like shut away in our houses, like completely oblivious to this whole world. That's just like going on 24 seven, you know? Yep. And uh, yeah, sometimes like, I don't know, I think this stuff is super important to kind of remind us and like jolt us back into reality and uh, yep. you know, shift our perspective a little bit again. Depends on what you're making the images for, you know, like, mm -hmm. like a Paul Nicklin image, he would probably say is made to like bring awareness to you know the conservation of the ocean and stuff but like i make a photo because it makes me feel good and like so it's i might i'm romanticizing it but yeah it's not like it's not the truth i'm not i'm like mm -hmm. telling a story something that i feel it's not really how it is yeah i feel like there's like two main story symptoms yeah. of our detachment from nature it's like we either don't value it enough and we just think it's like material shit that we can just extract and use for whatever and we don't need to protect it or anything because it's just there for the taking or we over romanticize it where like you know we, we kind of like inflate it in the wrong ways and like value things like you know it's, it's almost just like the other side of it you know like it's a distorted view of nature on either end yeah. mm -hmm. agreed and i wonder if that's detrimental at all because i you know some people might go out into nature because of photographs that really romanticize it expecting to have yeah. a certain kind of experience and then they don't value how nature actually is where they get rained on yeah. or um you know like there's horrible wind or it's super uncomfortable or freezing cold like you know that's that's how it really is and so mm -hmm. you know like you're not gonna have a real relationship unless you also accept those things but may, i mean is that really on the creator of the art to to present it in a way that's perfectly representative or is that on the person who expects something it depends on their motivation the yeah what you're trying to do with your photos but if it gets them out there and caring about it i view that as a, a positive maybe we'll get out there and it won't be fun right away and then eventually they will see a magic moment and understand that that makes it even more special like that it's not always like that mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah hey bellino and me behind tj now that was a nice moment oh yeah in the gorge yeah <laughs> yep that was a good day that's fun that was the uh meetup at Hood or um cascade locks right yeah yep. same day 2014 that was over 10 years ago wild incredible yeah it's a long time yeah this this just moment is so insane and there's one of those photos where like you know there's not really any composition um it's, it's very straightforward it's just about like documenting the moment but the moment itself is so powerful and just sucks you in and makes you wonder so many things without having creative artistic lighting or 
you know he's uh, not putting himself in there he's he's just showing you yeah like, just yeah. his raw presentation of showing you something nature. you never otherwise see yeah. i wonder if the uh, i wonder if the leopard knows that the baby is there and i wonder how or if yeah it's like died. almost like it doesn't even care like it's just collateral like like yep get, get in your bonus. last house you eat this bitch bonus snack for later or if it's like you know, did, the, uh, did the leopard show mercy to the little one hmm would it let it does it understand does what mercy it exist why? it doesn't like it probably it's doesn't. just it's just it's meat energy. man we're all just meat Bags at the end of the day meat. we all need to eat something else which was alive to find sustenance whether it be a yep. plant or an animal no way around it he's always alive. i propose that we're all consciousness in meat <laughs> for meat being aware of itself <laughs> the, the meat is there just the meat meat the meat is just the vessel for consciousness. Is this photo offensive to you, Brent? Because the leopard isn't vegan. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, of course not. No, like you, like you said, this is some real shit. You look down upon him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really intrigued uh, that the baby's like instincts apparently tell it to keep clinging. It's not like run away. Well, that's what it's learned as the safest place. Like yeah, on to mom. Yeah. Even in this situation, though, it doesn't have that, I don't know, awareness or yeah wherewithal to or think about doing something else. Dumbass. <laughs> That'd be a great Mother's Day card. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two for one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's just nuts. Great, I would, I would, this one pretty impacted heavy. me for a few days. I kept thinking about it, looking at it. Yeah, yeah. When I first saw it, it just, it just consumed me. Mm -hmm. Maybe just think and think and think and think. Yeah. In fact, I think I saw you, Eric, soon after. I was like, you got to see yeah. this one image of this leopard and a mama baboon. One of the most compelling images I've seen in a long time when I first saw it, for sure. Yep. Yeah, it's wild. Cool. So I don't know if you guys saw this one. Um, it's kind of a popular photo now. But uh, other than it being wildlife, you know, this flamingo on a beach somewhere, the background story behind it is really cool because uh, this was submitted to a competition that was all AI images and it won the competition. And then later on, the photographer revealed that it was actually a real photo. The so opposite. I thought that was, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool yeah. statement because I feel like a lot of people are trying to like defend AI and like have it be accepted as art and stuff. And yeah, it's kind of the, people are pushing for like the opposite thing. And then uh, this photographer, I feel like that worked out. Like if he didn't win the competition, then he wouldn't be able to make that statement. But uh, it worked out really well to make a cool statement about human-made works that I thought was pretty powerful. Wow. Really cool. It does seem really cool. kind of like a fever dream, like something an AI would think of it, with that mm -hmm. context. Yeah, it's kind of like a ball of feathers with legs just from the perspective of how it's turning its neck around and then very minimalist background with that strip of blue on top. Yeah, I'd never heard of this guy, Miles Astray, until that happened. I forget. I think somebody like reposted it or something, but I can't remember how I found it, but I thought it, it was really cool. Fascinating. The colors are really, really nice. They go well together. Blues are subtle enough to play off with the orange. Pink. It probably has other shots, you know, where the flamingo is like standing like normally. Its neck is up and everything, but... Not nearly as engaging. It's fascinating to to pick to pick this one. I yeah. don't know if I would have. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of a weird, like, uh, I mean, flamingos do this often. But yeah, it's like, yeah. usually if you're taking a photo of wildlife, you want to see its face or its eyes or like, you know, have it facing the yeah. camera or something. Yeah. Traditional wildlife photography would probably shun this, right? Like, it's not it's correct. It's not proper. Breaking the rules. Yeah. Camera club wild photography. Yeah. Wild camera club wildlife photography. Wild photography. You, would they would get, you would get ripped camera. apart by a camera club. <laughs> Gladys would not be happy. <laughs> Gladys. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool scene though. Really uh, surreal and stuff. But yeah, I liked it even more because that backstory. Ooh, that's cool. Gunner Gunnerson. Looks, looks cool. Yeah, he's got a great name. Very strong. He's not afraid of being a gunner. Alex Alexson. <laughs> Eric Erickson. Whose pick is this one? Tell Gunner, please confirm. Are you muted, Paul? <laughs> I don't know what guys. you're doing over there. You had to mute yourself, but that's some heavy heavy breathing going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah gunner he's a uh a photographer from iceland he's got some really great stuff he's got some wildlife and just like cool landscape stuff and uh i was really drawn to this image um a while back 
it just really it just pulls you into that scene of the remote areas of Iceland. This one specifically was up in the western fjords where he spent some time up there actually looking to photograph these uh, uh, Arctic foxes. So yeah, I really, uh, really like this one a lot. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Harshness is of survival. This is, this yeah. is how you mm -hmm. have to live, you live in Iceland. Yeah, mm -hmm. imagine just like walking around being cake and snow walking around in the middle of winter. This is fine. It's like the opposite <laughs> of the carving building. I'm fine. I'm fine. This is great. Don't worry about it. I'm warm. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'd be it so annoyed for that crust up there. He looks yeah. annoyed. <laughs> and again, it kind of speaks to uh, that whole idea of nature that... being raw. And mm -hmm. it's not that glorified glorification of nature i mean obviously an arctic fox on a nice bright winter day would be the holy grail for photographers but again he took care of the conditions like it was the way he's kind of the, the body language of the fox this is a fox right yeah yep yeah like mimics what would need to be happening in a wind-driven snowstorm right so mm -hmm. it just kind of has that sense of coldness the blue the out of focus snowflakes above like it all works so well together like just to depict to, to it feels cold you know this and it just conveys that there's nowhere to go like yeah you're just Talk you're just it enduring out. it you just got to sit it out yep and i want to know that's how warm. iceland is you know it's very open and hardly is any shelter yeah and like, what is the fox's comfort comfort level, right? When he beds down and gets covered in snow with that fur and probably some thick layer of fat, I imagine, you know, like he may be fairly comfortable. Yeah, could be a he good was... uh, a, a good movie poster for Cocaine Fox. <laughs> <laughs> space for the title and everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, images like this where the animals just have like a very stoic, like personality that comes through. There's like nothing you can do, so going through yep. it, no yep. escape. Right in it, you're in it. Yeah. I always think about when, when you see an animal that has like, you know, just the right body language, like this one or many of the other ones we watched, like a split second earlier and later, they were probably taking photos as well. And they probably looked like mundane or bad or whatever, but we draw so much just from like a split second. Um, we create like a whole story around it. But like, I feel like we have no way of actually knowing. It's, right. It's a, uh, yeah, I don't know what to make of it. Pillow talk time, Alex? Yeah. Uh, camper lights, <laughs> man. That fucking seat is not comfortable for two episodes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Brent is describing anthropomorphism, you know, like just projecting our, and like the photographer's editing is doing that, like choosing that that frame to project a certain thing that humans perceive but that might not be the truth of the situation i guess that's the art of it huh yeah yeah mm -hmm. it is interesting to choosing what you want to tell what story it's interesting to consider how other species perceive the world around us that we all live in but it's something that we'll never ever be able to know i just started reading an immense world like today that book <laughs> it's all about i have that uh, book too but i haven't opened it yet oh i mean Chapter one is all about smells and it's, it's been great, but oh. hmm. it's entirely just about how animals perceive the world so differently because of just their sense organs. And we can't even perceive to know what it would be like. We can right. imagine what it would be like to be a human in an animal, but that's not even the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. So. yeah even if you created a simulation that was hundred percent accurate, you'd still be experiencing a human being a deer rather than a deer being a deer or you know a fox being a fox if you were if you were human being a dog would you still sniff the other dogs <laughs> like, would you, you, feel like, you feel like you're like do you feel like you're like you know like one in rome type thing like you know hey, this, is, this is how I, this is how i introduce myself to this other dog you don't I sniff, sniff dogs buttholes when you walk by him yeah i didn't know that i was uh limited to dogs <laughs> If it's yeah, not that was normal behavior for anyone. Yeah. That's universal. <laughs> but, but they don't, it's not always accepted by the dog. But if you are a dog, then... I, I think we're onto tough. something here. <laughs> Whoa. I was going to do some research. Wow. So this was one that uh, Jennifer had chosen because she was going to be here tonight. And uh, I liked it so much, I still wanted to include it, even though she couldn't be here. Um, oh, yeah. Like it that. looks like an aerial of elephants like moving through some kind of muddy water. But I love the high-key treatment and... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it just kind of looks like an ink painting like it's super abstract and awesome looking really stylized yeah i like i like that gertrude rupra 
und uh, like people, yeah, just just taking things and not uh, just following the the rules of keeping everything fresh and or like you know like representative of reality. Mm -hmm. like yeah, like it's that. a beautiful image. Wild. No, yeah, I like that. Very cool. Look at his website. I really like when. I mean, it's still documentary. It, feels like to some extent but i like the more artistic style yeah it's just oh. different creative something new the website is loaded I'm trying to wrap my head around it a little bit yeah i think uh maybe it is inverted or at least uh, right, the it's like the water's probably look like that like i feel like the water the surrounding water is probably like dark muddy water and then uh, the ripples yeah. since the angle's changing because the water's moving it's like reflecting light so when they inverted it the rippling like trail got dark and then the muddy dark water got bright the, the elephants, elephants look don't normal. Look. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's like only partially inverted to mm. like selectively to make that stand out, get more separation. They could be wading through like uh, really bright green algae covering the water. I've seen photos like that too. Yeah. And then just in black and white, make the green super white. Totally the guessing. To like gray or brown. I don't see this photo on his website even. No, nah, I wasn't on there, unfortunately, but mm. which is crazy because it's so nice. He had another one though of a different animal that was pretty similar in the aerial gallery yeah I, I, saw, I saw that one i felt the same way about nicklin i'm like oh my gosh i want to see so many of these photos on my computer screen it's weird i'm trying to open it in photoshop to uh invert it back and see if it does how it works <laughs> photoshop won't open a screenshot png for some reason uh, that's what? weird hmm. should what does what could not open screenshot because the file name was not valid something with the file name anyway oh, why don't you rename it like butts or something yeah I just, it was just <laughs> screenshotting and dragging. <laughs> that is what I would name it. So I know that's what I'm saying. You know me. It'd have to be like butts fifty six seventy four to go with all the other butt photos you have on your computer. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this photo, Ian Plant, is one of my yeah. favorite wildlife photos. It's like, yeah, it, I think it's one of the first wildlife photos that I saw that just like. Stopped me in my tracks. Mm. It's also one of my favorite backlight photos. I reference it all the time when talking about backlight and midday shooting, even though I know this isn't midday, but just the uh, backlight in general. And uh, yeah, it's it's so simplistic. It's so just my kind of shot. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, this is a great pick. This is where my mind yeah. went when Eric's like, oh, pick your two photos, asshole. Like, get them to me. Oh, never mind. Ian Plant is already taken. God damn it. Yeah. And he, and he almost didn't let me. He's like, oh, we we just featured Ian Plant. I'm like, I, I don't care. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is how he talks, isn't it? It sounded like in this text. I actually <laughs> thought of this photo too, TJ. I was, I was almost picking Yeah, that's the one that's always been stuck in my mind. Here's, ever here's another one, like, <laughs> like the, the bull or bison, like, bucking back its horns in the fog. You know what I'm talking about? Yep, so yep. Like, that one's also incredible, but this is crazy. I think crazy. this might have been shot uh, with Modi because I feel like Modi has some shots like this yes, too. I think so. Like that are further away, like wider. Yeah. They both went to Greenland or something or Svalbard or Alaska. They used to go to Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Polar bear workshops in Alaska, I think. Back back before that was incredibly popular to do. That's crazy. Stands the test of time, like any good work, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Still feels really fresh. Well, that that elephant shot is not inverted. Okay. Maybe it's just like high key and that was the darker part of the water and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, polar bears, Ian Plant, backlight. Perfect pose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that it's up on the right, like that you don't see the complete foot either. I don't know if there's yeah, a Yeah, I thought that was the edge of the frame maybe or maybe uh, uh, it kind of for some reason the light isn't hitting it. Or like there's a stump or something. Like yeah. A, it but i just it makes it's it look pretty cool like catch, the way that yeah like that second foot from the left also doesn't complete all the way down right like it, it looks more sketchy that way yeah really nice and it's like yeah it's like symmetrical too with the first and last feet yeah yeah it is not the edge of the frame I'm looking at his website yeah i remember uh like it coming out further when yeah uh, yeah it's cool maybe he just didn't have like fur on that Part of the foot, you know, it's like more bare, shaved, you know, just shaved his feet. That Maybe day. he just painted black over it. <laughs> yeah. Love Good, this Good snap. <laughs> really great use of light here. Like, there, there's one of those things where it's not just about finding the animal, but also just the lighting is so uh, intentional here. It totally makes the scene. Mm -hmm. I feel like that doesn't line up very often. No, there's usually a lot of other bullshit lit up, distracting. Mm -hmm. There's one uh, 
like all these spirit bear photos, like Paul Nicklin has a ton of amazing ones too, but uh, they're just so awesome. Like these white black bears that are in these really lush rainforests in Canada and stuff. And uh, this one by Shane McDermott has always stuck with me because he was on Matt Payne's podcast a long time ago and he talked about this image and the story he shared behind it was like so unbelievable and epic that I was like, it just made me appreciate the image even more. So he was like with a workshop and they got to the spot where they're looking at these logs and there's no, no spirit bear in sight. And, uh, they're kind of like looking for spirit bears and stuff, but he just like says like, Hey, let's wait here for a second. This bear is like a bear is going to come out of the woods and he's going to walk along this log and like come out right to the spot. And then like five minutes later, like a bear comes out and goes right to the spot. <laughs> he was already set up and he just took the photo like crazy, uh, intuition or instinct or whatever you want to call it, or just coincidence. But, uh, yeah, it's a really sick photo too. Like, you know, nice composition here with these diagonal lines of the fallen stumps and stuff. And, uh, just like the nice texture of the green and everything. And then the way the spirit bear pops out with its white fur, like they usually do in these, these settings, just super, super striking. He must've been like, I am the greatest photographer who ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's how it always works out for him or if this was a special case. <laughs> I remember that story. Incredible. I wonder what he's looking for. What do they eat? Berries. Campers. Brents. Honey. Like Winnie the Pooh. This exactly. is Winnie the Pooh spirit bear. He's pretty light colored. Golden. No, he's brown. He's like yellow. Well, Actually, like that little, <laughs> that little log kind of nestled on the left. Like just a continuation of the, the, diagonal the diagonals. Theme and like an extra bit of context. Like these logs will eventually be nestled in the forest right now. They're a good path for the bear. It's pretty yeah. Sweet. yeah. Everything feels very intentional. Environmental. Portrait. It would almost be like a cool photo, even without the bear. It would. Then, yeah. It'd be fine. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the bear yeah. just brings it to another level. There's some, icing on the cake. It's sort of like we have two different types of wildlife photos primarily being shown here, like the environmental portrait like this, where they're just perfectly embedded in an already good composition and then like in plant with the outline just showing like the idyllic portrait of an animal and nothing else like the simplest form yeah just whatever works for the the moment the, the moment yeah this light you can't force any in plant photo you gotta make a shame yeah, the soft light here is nice too in this one because if they, if it had been like a sunny day it'd be too it'd probably be or like in the dark there. yeah if you could even see them be too much yeah already so like busy in terms of like the amount of detail so the soft light mm -hmm. all down and then the bear stands out so much more yeah there's an image i've remembered for a long time been in my memory bank spank bank well done shane <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh you went with the seals i gave eric a couple options from flores we didn't have a lot of marine life so i gave him one too i was gonna pick the uh, monarch one but then i picked the uh, Sebastian yeah. one instead. well i like the sebastian one i almost picked the monarch one too but i remember the seal photo like inspiring me like 13 years ago. I remember like in 2011, I moved to California and I was looking at a lot of Flores' work and was just blown away by it. And then I look at it this much later after I've done so many different things and it still feels, well, maybe not 2011, 2015 it says there, but I've looked at his stuff through the years and he's always inspired me. And yeah, he's he's so good. He's another like Ron where he doesn't even do it for a living and he just like effortlessly, he's an effortless world-class photographer on the side. What's interesting <laughs> about his wildlife stuff is it's like... Uh... It's kind of like layers, patterns and things, but it's made up of like flesh and like animals, you know, like here, like there's a scene of all these crazy repeating layers, but they're made by seals instead of like rocks or something, but it's like yeah, the same we, kind of idea. If there were rocks. It could be a cool photo too. I think yeah. that Art Wolf has done that with like the zebras and stuff. I, I don't know if someone picked that, but that's what I thought of when I thought of art. He said he was already mm -hmm. taken and I thought Floris, like not only that, but he used like light and atmosphere, something that's often absent from wildlife photos like usually it's about the hunt about capturing the animal like even seeing it at all let alone taking advantage of light the way ian did or flores did here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i love how it's just like black and white textureless all about the ridges that are eliminated by the backlight and it's kind of like a scene. bad land scene or something you know the lower left balances out the two main seals too like the whatever those ones are doing uh-huh it's broken forms a couple little seagulls in there too, which are kind of cool that you notice afterwards. A bit of context with the seagulls, one, and that's the ocean in the background. I mean, it's just really great. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it was in Oregon too or something. California. It is California? Yeah, I'm on his website. He says there are over 150 seals. I did my best to count them. (laughs) (laughs) In in this frame. (laughs) Uh, To me, I immediately went to like, it looks like waves crashing. Like two just like hitting each other and exploding Mm. amongst uh, smaller waves. I just realized uh, like I've been following him or, you know, looking at his website for years I don't know if I've ever clicked on his wildlife section. That was great <laughs> got, stuff in there. I got work to do. <laughs> he hasn't uploaded anything in a long time, has he? No. If you follow right. his blog, he'll he'll make a post every few months. Really? Every few months? Really? Yeah, I feel like or the last less. one was like a couple of years ago when he moved to Reno. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, you're right. Years might go by, months or years. Yeah. He posted like three new photos and like a report about like snowshoeing in the mountains or something, skiing. Yeah, I love his stuff. I wish he would uh, keep creating more stuff and share it often. Yeah. He's one of my favorites. Every yeah. composition is like perfect in his work. It's insane. And he doesn't rely on cheap tricks like he's... Yeah, know. shooting clear yeah. light, you know, like clear uh, bluebird skies all the time and like... He doesn't oversaturate. He doesn't do anything crazy in editing. Not remarkable conditions. Just really intelligent compositions like really well yeah. seen stuff yeah just doing shit different and different yeah he does a lot of creative. without being super wonky or weird though yeah. you know like no like icm whole... like multiple exposure stuff it's just like <laughs> straightforward oh, yeah. but we're real jack off to do some icm the u uh the uv lighted ibex and all those rocks oh yeah that one's crazy oh. Yeah, and then the one he has of the snow that he lit up with his headlamp and the snow's like blowing through the frosty oh, yeah. trees. That one's yeah. so cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the one in the cave, like one of the ice caves in southern Oregon where like he put some illumination in there as well. There's like this kind of like mm-hmm. an abstract amalgamation of different shapes and colors and such an impressive image. Yeah, he's awesome. He's great. It's kind I of cool this image. You're going to say something, Michael? I was going to say something really fast. Just that he left it kind of the haze works really well. And what's yeah. kind of fascinating is, is that the two central figures are the, some of the darkest parts of the frame, which is generally like, you know, you want, you know, that's kind of the opposite of what our eyes typically drawn towards, which is the more brighter parts of the frame. But yeah, um, he didn't need the process there. of very, I think some people may want to bring those or bring the blacks in and, and darken them. Um, but he's not the very natural, which is so good. Yeah, he didn't crush it or like make the contrast super harsh. Like a lot of people yeah. would. And the ocean, the sliver of ocean being up there draws your eye to that area too. So it makes those even more like immediately the subject. And then you get to explore from there. Yeah, it pulls your eye up through the frame. Up, but everything else is so striking that you don't get lost out of the frame. Holy shit, yeah. Art. Holy shit. I almost picked this image too. <laughs> Me too. That's so sick. That's That's you picked it. It's unreal. I got this one. Yeah, I picked, uh, I dug deep uh-huh. and picked Art Wolf and Paul Nicklin. Um, <laughs> 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 they fit. I also realized uh, both of my images are big animals chasing away fish, <laughs> which I didn't do on purpose, but yeah. apparently that's my thing. Um, <laughs> but, but a canvas for large animals is great patterns. So. Yeah. Yeah. Are you the big uh, animal or are you the fish, Brent? <laughs> uh, I'm the fish. And so he's I'll be the big animal then. Come here. Come here, buddy. Big and cuddly. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean what to say this is probably a well-known image but just uh i think overall it's the colors are so striking yeah. to me oh my i didn't God. even know fish could look like that they're so close to yeah. the surface you can see them you can still see the texture it tells an incredible story about the bear and what he's up to and just like the dynamics between the two species yeah like, these are spawning salmon so they turn super red like right before they they die and stuff i've seen okay. them in like the green river and stuff in the Wind River Range, and it's pretty cool. So I'm guessing mm-hmm. this is at the bottom of a falls, which is why there are so many congregated there. I'm not sure. That's a uh, that's, that's a kind lot of the mystery of here. One small area. But I, yeah. I love how they're just like slowly, like kind of avoiding the bear. But he just he's just cruising, you know. He's like, I have a million choices. Like he doesn't look <laughs> like he's frantically like hunting, you know. He's just like, I'm just gonna go through this with my mouth up and then like get what I get. Probably like, I was like a fucking fool. Like, I just need yeah. to go home. Yeah, you know, he's trying to get out. Yeah. Yeah, or, or he thought it was going to be like super easy, and he jumps in, and like they all keep their distance, and 
it's a lot yeah i love that negative space surrounding him just that that nice gap it's so satisfying mm-hmm. and how it's kind of kind yeah. of green too the yeah. swirls of the like water the, match like oh, the swirl of the fish around him too like yeah the, mm-hmm. I, was gonna say, I like the I like the surface of the water on top of the fish like in the foreground or at the bottom of the frame mm-hmm. where the, the fish are like barely under breaking the, the surface the of the water imagine. yeah and so it goes back to like did he recognize like obviously this is not polarized did he i'm not sure if he would use a polarizer in this situation but obviously not being polarized at such a dimension to this photo it could like have been the, partially polarized because you, you are seeing partially. some underwater true enough yeah you're true but maybe he's he reckon i want because art is such an obvious you know master that he probably recognizes that maybe those highlights yeah. in the water something the sweet was spot. include in the general composition which is something i probably would not be thinking about yeah maybe yeah you would have ruined this one totally <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's totally a mess you gotta, in, you gotta get art on the show you have to, you yeah, have to switch. he likes to drink tequila, tequila tequila right tequila tuesday back in covid days yeah he was getting yeah. sloshed too he'd be like slurring <laughs> <laughs> oh man such a cool image Wow. Has anyone checked wow. out his uh, his latest book? I was thinking about getting it. Which one is it? Book, man, that's crazy. Um, it's a uh, it is a wildlife book. Oh us. yeah, it's called Wild Lives, right? Yeah, that was it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Have you guys met him? You started with the W though. Have I? No, I've not met him. You know, he never writes. He never writes you. Yeah. Yeah. Unrequited love. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, you met him, right, Eric? Yeah. Uh, he was at a photography conference a few years ago that I was at, and I talked to him for like five minutes. He's really nice. I saw him on the trail of Mount Rainier one year. He was coming down with a workshop group, and I looked up, and there he was, and he's like, how you doing? And he, he totally wanted to stop and talk, and I was so hero. What's the word? Starstruck. I was just like, made some quip around being late and needed to bust up the trail more. And I felt like he put his pack down. I feel like he wanted to talk a little bit. I, I'm still kicking myself for not telling him what his work means to me. And like, like his art, even before Galen was the person who got me into photography, it's kind of art then Galen, the one, two punch back in the early two thousands. He, was one he of must the have great. been starstruck. I was. <laughs> I he must have been. He must have been seeing Bellino. Oh yeah, he was. He's like, you're Bellino? Yep, Bellini. You got long, Mikey Bellini, is that you? You got a lot of, you got a lot of work to do, buddy. You got <laughs> My wife once gave me a, a, a I think it's a Father's Day gift for a, a talk he was giving in Portland, and I was kind of like, eh, do I want to go? And I went, and literally, it's just like amazing. Just his presentation on design elements, and it was just fantastic. Yeah, his really presentation valuable. at that conference was really cool, really inspiring. I was like Super so inspiring. excited to go out and take photos as soon as it was done. Yeah. Was it Outsiders? Mm-hmm. Were, were yeah, you at the, the first one year. Paul Nicklin was at, too? No, I just did the first year with Art. I saw Paul's talk at that one. I dropped in on that one. That was also amazing. Like, these guys are they're really interesting stories. I'm just like... Yeah, they just share you know, stories from their lives. And rocks so interesting. And I took a picture of them, and uh, that was that. <laughs> well, see you yeah. later. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like you have these really meaningful experiences, but they just don't come off like in words as like the same way as they were, you know, like it's hard to do them justice with words where this stuff, it's like, you know, these amazing adventures, like getting attacked by large animals, like making it out by the skin of your teeth. It's a lot more exciting. And I don't know. You have to portray that they're, or to convey that they're more than rock, more than a rock. Yeah. Less than or equal to a rock. It's not really due for it. Yes. More to be bare. Oh, True. That story. Oh, another new, shirt <laughs> there That's, it is what? Yeah. when did i didn't even notice that going That's number three dude <laughs> Taylor can't Swift over there. can't see Alex's Eric, face. he's just wearing a green screen it's like changing the... <laughs> that photo oh, baby. i'll put that alex's face screen. next you gotta make it smaller <laughs> you gotta like add That's bars huge. to the side they... add bars to the side in photoshop make That's it too, too much good. work i'm not fucking doing I'll that i'll fucking do it i'll do it like, oh it's cropping his head <laughs> those are some crazy images yeah it was a good set of uh, wildlife shots i 
Let I've seen one. crazy wildlife images, but seeing them all together, like some really excellent picks, like wow. It's yeah. me want to go spend ten thousand dollars on a lens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. And then uh, another ten thousand dollars on a cheaper. trip. Some of them are like they're just environmental moments. Like you could do it with any landscape lens too, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really about the eye of whoever was shooting them. Yeah, definitely made me appreciate them a lot more, and uh, I kind of want to go look at some more wildlife photography now. I kind of just write it off because it's kind of overwhelming to focus on too many genres, like even just consuming stuff, not even trying to shoot it yourself. But um, yeah, a lot of this stuff, like it's just very intertwined with the landscape. So it's like, it doesn't really feel that much different than what I do. And there's lessons we can um, One wild landscape. Shot. You have one? One. Can you text me that photo, TJ? <laughs> 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 time to get to work <laughs> never having tj and alex on a episode again <laughs> <Not together. laughs> thank you for, thanks Old Actually, no, I, was, uh, I had to like make sure that he was doing the episodes so that i so that i would do them <laughs> incoming oh yeah oh yeah look at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're living now, huh? Here, I'll just. How about this? Why do you want to show us the rest of the image so bad? Well, I just feel like. Is it that much better? I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like the mystery. It's like, who is it? What kind of face? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, the sunglasses really help. Help for me. Yeah, just yes. like missing some elements. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. It'd be funny uh, if animals were taking pictures of humans and there's stuff like that. I call like it weird things that that's we That's like do. an award-winning photo for an animal. <laughs> like, <laughs> we caught this a human. gopher took it. They're like, they're, uh, what's the animal word for anthro? I don't know. Like, <laughs> they're promorphizing their own. <laughs> yeah. Promorphizing. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, good stuff. Thanks good for coming stuff. on. Great. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Great images. Cheers Cheers a wild episode. Get wild. See you guys. Get wild tonight.